And all right, all right. So, welcome to the finals of Bracket B of the Woody TV Spring Championship Preliminaries. In the top left-hand side, our Blue Zerg player from Dragon Phoenix Gaming. This is Rogue. He starts down a game, even though this will be the first map we have played, as he came from the lower bracket of this little one-day event. As he takes on Keen, the Red Terran, bottom right-hand side. To a Ragnarok, 2-1 nice to get here. Hell freaking yeah. And Silly Teresa, thank you so much for the one-year resub to kickstart this final. So this is a best of five. Keen starts 1-0 because he came from the winner bracket. Again, just a reminder of what, what this is for. Basically, $100 first place, $50 second place. Uh, both of them are qualified into the playoffs of the tournament as well, uh, which will be for $700 total prize pool. I believe that's like $25 round of eight, $50 round of four. 150 300 dollars something along those lines i guess that doesn't quite add up 550 650 maybe 100 300 something along those lines but of course the main thing as well is by making it to the playoffs they are also invited into the wadi tv summer championship main event which is the four thousand dollar prize pool event and that's the one that most players will be expected to be having their eyes on so uh we do have that as well just to keep you guys reminded as to what is uh what's happening As our overlord will see an SCV sneaking on by. Obviously, just wanting to get across the map. The early game here is just scouting, wanting to know, is this pool first? Is this hatchery first? Well, in this case, yeah, it actually is pool first. So, knowing about that early is good. It can mean you can play a little bit defensively if needed, etc. So, yeah, that's uh, it's kind of cool. I think just always safe to know what's going on and... He saw those lings going right, so he's going to send his Reaper up the right side, but then it's a little scary to send it too far that way, just in case nothing is actually committed over there. So then we kind of pull back from it. Our Zerglin speed is about halfway done, as we have got the reactor building on the barracks. Queen... Coming through as well, and that drone is making its way out down to the low ground here. Yeah, I think I'm going to be pretty passive. I guess we could talk a little bit about the uh, the Rogue Rag uh, sorry, the Keen Ragnarok series earlier today. Uh, that's obviously some TVZ we already saw of Keen, where he played a pretty convincing mech game in one of the games, and he played a pretty convincing he played a pretty convincing mech game one time. And he played a pretty convincing bio game this, the second time around where Ragnarok had a weird start. He built roaches that were never used in an attack. So he was a bit behind, but Keen really just played well. And I gotta say, I'm kind of impressed with Keen lately. It's amazing what he's been able to come back and do since returning from the military. It felt like Keen left on for the military after being a player. He was always, you know, a middling Korean player, like a medi... I don't want to say mediocre, right, but... He was never, like, a championship winner for the last few years. And then just as he was leaving for military, it felt like he had some really good runs. I was kind of sad that he ended up then leaving. But as he's come back, he's looked really, really good. And uh, I'm genuinely impressed considering he's, what, like, three, four months back? So, uh... Yeah, that's pretty, uh, pretty cool, if I gotta say so myself. Been very uh, enjoyable stuff here. Seeing Keen do well, and especially good to have him back in my tournaments. I talked about this earlier as well, but he has been someone who has played in my tournaments from very, very early on, from way back in the day. So it was very nice to have, um, very nice to have that be, uh, you know, to have him back again and just have him still playing. So, uh, hell yeah. This few Hellions is gathering on up, and we've got a Banshee. On the way out, so Banshee is gonna pop. Is few Hellions where are we gonna go? Wanting to maybe make their way through into this mineral line, gets a single drone. Now these couple queens gonna push those Hellions out of way towards the center. I mean, as the cloak finishes up for the Banshees, we're gonna have a little bit of additional harassment potential from Keen as well. There's plenty of lings and rogue already moving around, especially around this uh, top side of the map and so on. So, 
Let's see what they get up to, see if they can bring anything particularly interesting to play, some counterattacks at fun timings and so on. Uh, so right now, not really a lot happening. I'm just waiting for Stim to come up. Banshee in the main base does find a couple of kills. That's four kills in total on the Banshee. Gonna find a fifth kill of its own right now. Oh, not bad stuff. I mean, there's still a second Banshee that's on its way across. As our first Banshee still dives in and dives out. No lair just yet, so... No one is loading no lair knows he's basically... Just gotta avoid those uh, spore crawlers and he'll be golden. And that has been what he's been up to and doing so far. Runs out of energy now, but is far enough away from a queen to be in any trouble. Six drones killed, and Keen gets some reasonable damage on the board. It's not going to win him the game, but it's the sort of thing that definitely sets him up to be in a prime position to make some cool moves in the future. It's definitely Rogue that's got to play that little bit of catch-up uh, to begin with here. Punch turns back around as you see the Ling's is going to go running south. They're going to find a couple of these SCVs, so going to get rid of two, three of these right away. Three workers already dropping. I mean, they really dropped in an instant as well. So, I mean, those are the little counterattacks that we're expecting to see do well from Rogue, as he actually dies for these Hellions when the Hellions found the Ling's. He gets one of the Hellions, but loses a lot of Ling's in the process, of course, so obviously not exactly ideal. A spire is coming up, just going to be having that finished. A dropper lord coming through on that baneling speed, going to be finishing in as well. And just going to be seeing our Hellion still settling down for the middle of the map here. As our marine tank force is now going to move forward. I mean, look at the supplies. Rogue is banking up so much money to build muters. And as he builds those muters, the army supply catches up, but it still is a lead for Keen. And this changeling has given Rogue so much information, though. Keen killed off a couple of them, but there was a third one involved, so for information as this army comes all the way across the map, so at least Rogue knows what's coming his way, knows what he's got to deal with in a second. No Banelings ready at all, by the way, as so we have an empty Drop Lord flying into the main. So an empty Drop Lord makes its play to essentially just scout, trying to scare Keen a little bit. Not really going to do much just yet, though. Yeah, those first muters really kind of coming through, and now we've got them coming across the map. As Keen never committed to a fight, and I feel like that's something which is a bit unfortunate, because I actually would have loved to see Keen force some trades here. Uh-oh, those marines are in a weird place. He just saves the second siege tank. And I would have loved to see Keen force some trades, because it was really only Ling Muta on the map. And with 1-1 one -one upgrades, those marines probably should have been able to do very, very well, but never uh, quite found proper opportunity for it. So yeah, maybe a, a little bit of a missed opportunity. Oh, the Banshees get found. They, they do get hit down just before they cloak. Another little bit of a shame, but nothing major. Because if you still have those two Banshees, right, it just gives you another option, another way to harass, another way to deal damage. It is typically just good to have those uh, options on your side. Oh, and now the missile turret's going down here as well. Bane's just rolled in here to kill a bunch of SCVs too. And all of a sudden, Rogue is just all over Keen, and Keen is struggling to keep up. And I did think going into this that there might be a little bit of a, you know, a skill difference between Keen and Rogue, but I think it's really starting to show as well. I feel like Keen only had some chances, just didn't quite find a way to take advantage of them. Now he had an intercept on those muters there as well, but he wasn't paying attention, and Rogue was. Rogue tilted the muters a little bit further north, and Keen just didn't quite notice until a moment too late, and then he still stimmed the marines as well, which is going to cost him some medevac energy. A little bit, uh... A little bit rough here, as Keen just has so much creep spread to deal with on the map as well. He's just not being able to keep up with this creep going absolutely everywhere at the moment, as... A single Baneling gets shot down. Here comes the Ling Bane. We just start to roll on through. The Marines pulling back. The tanks are sieged. All of this Ling Bane continuing forward. The Marines continue to split back. As the Banes are really going to be on top of this in just a few short moments. One Marine in the front gets taken down. Now the rest of these Banes coming through. Connecting in. I mean, the entire army of Keen just got cleaned up. And uh, Rogue is going to look to you. Really just start running away with this game right now.
Infestation pit in the back of the main base. All of those extra bane lanes continuing through. Getting ready to go. Obviously just one link going forward. Sets off the first wood on mine. Corruptor that was I think accidentally made. Sets off another. is not even a full wall off here. So these bands can actually get behind the depots already. And really start rolling in for all of these marines and so on. As we are just going to go and more or less clean this out, right? I mean, a few more SCVs continuing down. A lot of these SCVs continuing down. In fact, five, seven workers all falling. That uh, Thor get picked off. A medic getting picked off. That's GG's and Rogue is going to take game number two of this series. Again, start down one bit battle cruiser into mech. That would be my assumption. Based on how Keen has been playing and all that kind of stuff. Let's see what happens in the bottom left hand side. Our blue Terran is indeed Keen. Is he just a little bit outmatched though by Rogue, our right at Zerg in the upper right hand corner of the map? It is time for us to find the hell out, isn't it? Yes, it is. Alrighty, well, a couple of drones on the way through. This depot going to finish up, and it's going to go and place down a barracks. How much money is Rogue making for today? Well, if he wins, it's $100, but you also qualify into the top eight, and the, the playoff bracket is worth $700 in total. $25 guaranteed for top eight, etc., and obviously all the way through to like a $300 first place prize, so... Yeah. Obviously, usually we don't... Uh, we actually just change it up a little bit. So, usually, obviously, these guys would get paid out, like, just in the playoffs. Uh, but instead, we decided to pay out each of these little brackets themselves as, like, their own little tournament. And then still have, like, a playoff payout just a little bit less. So, overall, you're kind of getting two chances of earning money. It helps spread the money around a little bit more as well. I've uh, never been a fan lately of these top-heavy prizes or anything. I'd rather just give a good amount of money out to as many players as possible, right? Is generally our our goal with our tournaments but again you guys make happen and uh, obviously already mentioned about how you can support via subscribing and how that helps the tournaments but uh, there's also a patreon page patreon.com forward slash wardy tv you can exclamation mark patreon in the twitch chat and that will take you straight on over there a hundred percent of what you pledge on patreon goes directly into wardy tv tournament prize pools so if you pledge ten dollars on patreon you're essentially putting $10 into a tournament prize pool every month, essentially. But, I mean, that's if you want to continue it after the first month or whatever. The only thing that doesn't go in is, like, any transaction fees or whatever, right? Like, you know, I can't make money out of nowhere if it does get uh, caught up and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I mean, basically, best way to support the tournaments directly is that Patreon page. We have some serious lag here. That's me disconnecting this time. Is my thing still bad? I think it's recovering. Ah. I feel bad because I feel like it might be my fault that this Reaper was so heavily committed to the main base. Well, that was unlucky. The Korean server is a little bit, like, wacky today. That's a little bit crazy. I uh, had a couple of issues logging in, but otherwise it's been okay okay throughout. Um, yeah. I, I imagine the players did see that as well, because I, I, fully, I fully DC'd, right? So, yeah, I'm not sure. Exactly. I didn't drop anything on stream, though, and I, the rest of my internet's fine. There really is just connection to the Korean server having a bit of a... A bit of a mishap so apologies for that guys hopefully it doesn't happen again if it does happen again we'll probably just have to tap out of the game let the players play it out we'll pick up the replay and pick up from there or something but uh you know we just don't want to disrupt the players or anything you know so um yeah sorry for sorry for that as we do have a marine that's gonna go nibble this overlord is cloak banshees on the startup 
Not going to see those BCs. Not going to see those BCs, not for the moment. Hey, Gatia, thank you so much for the 19-month resub on the Prime. Appreciate it. A handful of Hellions will come back around the center of the map. And seven drones build up and uh, get on going here. We've got a couple of those queens coming through too. Rogue is just in full-on macro mode. Got a few links to defend, a few queens out the front. And he's even going to drop some Evo Chambers before you move into Alara or anything this game. That does mean these badges can be that little bit more annoying. You will not have an Overseer for a long time, so it really will just be the Spore Crawler defense against these guys and gals. And that will be what we kind of leave this to for the moment as our Banshees find a little bit of space between the bases. Actually, no spore in this natural, so there was actually really an opportunity there to get some damage done. Maybe a bit of a shame to have uh, probably missed out on that, as this evil chamber will take some hits, but I mean, this should never really become concerning, right? Because the moment this becomes concerning is the moment in which you just uh, transfuse that evil chamber. These Hellions gonna pick away at a lot of the lings as they dive on by they only get a couple of drones we are going mech behind this as well we're gonna get a few more drones at the end that are low hp so one hitable by the banshee well that banshee gets chased away up to the the top side in the end hmm okay, okay. two more factories on the way up then from keen as we get this going Italian's coming through. That Lair is on the way up in the main base as well. He's going to pick off another drone there with his Banshee off to the side. Overall, six workers killed. And with it being mech, I'm not so bothered about those Hellions dying either. So I actually don't mind it. At first I was like, ah, are these Hellions really getting enough done? But yeah, I think for the fact it's mech, like I say, more Hellions are produced, so you still have ongoing map control. I think it's kind of neat. We're going to go into this double Thor setup on the follow-up. There was a really cool thing that Keen did earlier against Ragnarok, which is that he played one BC after an, like a Marine Hellion opening, and then he played into like uh, double Thor after that, and, and Ragnarok built a Spire expecting there to be multiple BCs, and there wasn't. That's something that Keen is obviously not using in this game, but just lets you know this idea of kind of, he's got some fun builds, and his builds definitely have some good planning behind them as well, which I thought was really cool to see. We even saw in that game him going into Banshee production a bit later as well, so maybe that's something we'll see now too. Banshee production being brought back a little bit further down the line. He already has two, but he can still add on more than that to make them a dangerous hit squad out and about on the map. As those SCVs do sit and repair the accidental swarm host, question mark. I don't think that's a real swarm host. I mean, infestation pit finished and he built a hive. And if their swarm host would have been a, a, a really interesting addition on top of that, honestly. This is very Ling Bane focused, right, though? I mean, this is not uh, really the best comp to have against mech just yet. And right now, there isn't a lot to really deal with this either as Hellbats push through. A couple of fours to back this up as well. That swarm host will drop its couple of locusts, but that is the only swarm host. The medivacs do have lifts available, so you can bring the fours closer to the queens. The other thing about this is obviously you can take them away from the zerglings. More importantly, and Keen's attack is catching Rogue very off guard. One four goes down though, and that is the only problem with this is that those fours are a lot of the supply and a lot of the power. The moment they're getting picked off and pushed away is a bad moment. Uh, did they both die? Did that one get away? I don't know where that one Thor is. That Yeah, so that one med medivac is the one that got away. I just saw the other medivac die. I was like, wait, that wasn't the one with the Thor inside, was it? No, it was It was absolutely not. Okay, well, a cool attack. I mean, if nothing else, Rogue Trade's pretty badly coming out of it. And supply, uh, work accounts, sorry, are pretty even. Supply's a little bit favoring, Keen. It just is mech. <laughs> and whenever you play mech, I'm always very cautious about calling someone ahead because the thing is with mech is that you can feel like you're having a good game, you're trading well, and it just doesn't matter. The Zerg can still, you know, absorb so much of the damage you put their way and still be all right to carry on for the next step of it. And right now, the creep spread's looking good. The base survived. These are all things that, you know, and a few more drones came out. These are all things which I really like for Rogue. 
And, you know, now that a bit more time has passed on by. You can see, I saw Paston Glans in the production tab and also in infestation pits. He's now got double infestation pits, uh, which is perhaps a little bit of a mistake. Not sure about that, because he obviously already started the hive, right, as well, so... Yeah, I'm not sure what he was thinking there. Maybe that was meant to be something else. Maybe that was meant to be, like, off the high finishing the Ultra Cavern already, and, and now he didn't build that on time, and that would be problematic. Well, that is kind of a thing. A lot of creeps breaking cleaned out as these Banes go rolling forward. And a single Hellion gonna just, uh... Absorb the hits there, as we do otherwise see this force able to turn everything else around. Ultra Cavern, gonna be done in the back in just a few moments. Those Vipers gonna consume up and get their energy roll, and that makes it so much more difficult to fight against the Zerg when they have a good counter on the map like Vipers. They're able to deal with the mech army much more easily, pick away at some of the more critical, you know, more important units take some of the more expensive units out of the fights as well. Love these Banshees coming back around utility all the way throughout the game if you keep them alive. That's definitely uh, one of the best things you can be doing, just keeping units alive and giving them a second chance. This Cyclone's walking backwards. But buddy, turn it, there we go. Start facing the right way eventually, huh? Hmm, the only problem here is there's nothing to really get rid of these Banes easily. And so a lot of these Banes getting decent slash damage done. I mean, eventually Keen can clean up and turn back around, but it took a little while and that's all you want as Rogue. You know, a chance to push Keen back and to give yourself some breathing room, give yourself some space to work with. Typically a pretty big plus as we do move through and we've got a Cyclone, a couple Cyclones, Hellbats as well. Coming into secure this base or just fight this base. I mean, at the same time, we've got another attack on this right side. This uh, Cyclone's still making progress. And that's going to be reinforced as Lings go over here, but they're met by Blue Flame Hellions. So, uh, I mean, you're going to lose a base top side as Rogue. We're going to see this right side. Mm, I think right side survives. These Lings surrounding the Thor should do pretty well, though the Cyclones will come out to help out. Yeah, more Lings. This mineral line, 15 SCVs lost before this was dealt with, and we're still pushing forwards over here. These ultras, can they make the difference? Can be the, maybe this sturdier force to really help push through this so far, looking so good. But they actually do very well. And now they will continue across the far left-hand side where they want to go and uh, jump on a CC, which is just going to lift off. Cyclones coming up as Lings, Queens, and Ultras setting up together. The transfusions on those Ultras doing pretty well as the plus three vehicle plating is on the way up as well. It's just getting that going. And she's taking a decent amount of damage as we keep on pushing up to the top. First Thor actually tanks a whole chunk of Bane's counter-attack again though when SCVs are going down. So some drones to your fall. SCVs are falling too. And now this Terran army looks like it might be falling. Let's see what can be done. Uh, tank in the back gonna come out of the blinding cloud to see the rest of its buddies dead. Uh, just Rogue having a bit too much as he swarms onto that point and Keen just can't seem to withstand the amount of units that Rogue can just crank out throughout this. Um, doesn't seem to be... Uh, Possible as 13 drones dying. I mean, still doing okay, killing workers. And that's that's one thing, right? Definitely slowing down economy, even forcing new drones to be built. Slows you from building new units, right? So, you can't complain necessarily so much about what Joaquin's getting done as these cyclones come through and those uh, lings getting pushed back away from there pretty much immediately. And Cyclone's continuing through Ling Bay and Ultra. Lines up for uh, an attack slash a defense. I mean, Keen. Gonna bring his Cyclones forward. If he can get some good lock-ons, you know the damage can be put out. He's gonna find himself an Ultraless kill, so 
This is the sort of thing you want, you know, push forward, get yourself some value. Oh, that Cyclone army gets dem <laughs> gets absolutely demolished just by the Viper Abducts. I was going to say, at first, it was like, they killed that first order. I was like, hell yeah, look at that value. And then it's like, oh, Abduct, 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 that Viper popping off a couple and just essentially all those Cyclones going down. That is just a cost you then can't afford to replace. Not repeatedly, at least. Uh, not of 63 workers, so... That is where Rogue is going to start winning this game. Those Viper Abducts are extremely efficient. These run buys have held back the economy. I mean, it all works together. It all comes together to help out. Uh, a few of those things are in range of the turret. That's funny. I didn't even need to scan to clean them up from their burrow. Bans gonna find some hydras that don't have detection. Here come the overseers. Only ended up killing one of them. Is now these banshees gonna start going down as well. Abduct yoink, and the final banshee gets brought back. Kills a hydra. Actually protects the turn and tries to get out of here. Wow, does get out of there. That's kind of funny. Well, should have got out of there. Stopped moving. That's kind of funny. Left hand side. Ultras are gonna try and make their way through again. The hellbats morph in to try and be that defensive line that's. He needs them to be. And he will hold the base, but he loses so many units to gain in, you know, in, the, in the process. Down another chunk of supply and hurting once again. These last few links get found from the uh, previous burrow that was somewhat in range of a missile turret, so that's that big off. Look, it's gonna burrow up. We're gonna get rid of a Thor already and just gonna keep on pushing through this. Parasite bomb on the Banshee. You're gonna kill another of the Banshees too. Just gonna see that old commander's begin to burn down. Just gonna see the rest of the lurkers coming through. I mean, Rogue actually down at 165 supply. Been losing a, a fair amount, but he's gonna kill the SUVs. He's gonna more or less kill off this base. Even if this base survives, it's a question of how much it costs to keen type out GG anyway. Uh, Baroque just a little bit too good, guys. A little bit too good as he goes up 2 to 1. This. So let's get going as we might have our last match of today's little bracket for the Summer Championship. As in the upper left-hand corner, we have got the red Zerg player. This is Rogue. Taking on the uh, Blue Terror on bottom right side had a great run up until this finals and in the finals is just running into perhaps too many issues. It is keen. This Rogue has just looked very good in the finals. Again, got to mention Rogue started in the tournament in the lower bracket because he uh, didn't show up at the very start. So it was just kind of late to arrive and hence didn't, um, didn't get to... to chance at the winner bracket basically uh so yeah he had a forfeit in his first game and since then has been well quite perfect started down a map against ragnarok then went two to one two to oh against nice and now two zero in a row against keen as keen's one map game from the one oh winner bracket starts advantage Do do had to gas and pool, so nothing uh, too cheesy or crazy to begin with as well, worth noting. Especially someone like Rogue, who is definitely not being afraid of throwing that kind of stuff out there in the past. The Debo just dropping on it down, and the Reaper pops out. Let's follow our uh, Reaper across the map for a bit of a bit of an initial journey in this uh, in this game. I 
We got a drone. Do we get the Reaper out alive? We do. Nice start. To get a drone kill is, is always pretty, pretty awesome. So that's great. Good start in this indeed. As I Reaper came back through towards the middle. I was going to patrol on the edge of creep spread here. Going to hop up to the high ground and a queen continuing over is going to hit that Reaper a couple of times. So Reaper just gets hit a couple of times, gets pushed back. Circling speed is on the way. And yeah, first heli is on the way up as well. Very intrigued as to what Keen does because he really is the player in my eyes that needs to make some interesting moves here, right? He's not the guy that can just sit back and be like, oh yeah, whatever. You know, this is what it is. Nah, he needs to make some moves, I think. And uh, he is going to start I mean, start with the medevac, then go cloak behind it. So maybe cloak Banshee's on a follow-up to this initial, uh, I suppose, some drop play. Two Hellions and a Reaper will gather on the left-hand side. Taking down a Creep Tumor, bopping the Queen's away to get another one. The Hellions is going to go after that Queen as well a little bit, just chasing that away. A couple more Zerglings going to get zapped. We have this one uh, medivac loading up for Hellions, and it's going to take them for the main base. So I like this Hellion drop. I think just something different. Trying another way to get some damage done. Double gas behind this on the natural, too. So we're once again looking to play mech here as Keen. You know, there was a point in the previous game I thought Keen had some good chances. I feel like some of the attacks were well set up, and, you know, it felt like he had some potential just in the end. It felt like Rogue also just had way too much and was able to just trade out uh, with. You know, in a good way as well. Well, these things just get picked off pretty much immediately as a couple of drones go down. Just gonna see these group cumulus at the front still being picked away at as well. Two drones going down and these Hellions do escape out of here. I mean, just gonna get in for another drone kill. Battlecruiser on the way behind this, by the way. I kind of like that. I wonder if he's gonna go for that Battlecruiser into uh, the Thor follow-up that we saw against Ragnarok. I thought that was a cool mind game. I actually wouldn't mind seeing that, although in this case, the Slayer's so late anyway, the Spire will be so late. Maybe it's actually not worth... Maybe it wouldn't work that well, because the whole idea is that you would uh, you know, force your opponent to commit into a Spire right away. And then they realize, wait a sec, before they realize that, it's like, oh my god, there's only one BC, they've already committed into something like the Corruptors. I have drones and Overlord on the top side of the map as well, going down. Gonna move through this BC is gonna get this overlord in the next couple moments. Another overlord falling, so honestly, decent damage across the board here thus far from Keen. Doing pretty well with this. On the bottom side, these lings run by though, and that's painful. I feel like Rogue's uh, or Keen's been having a really good time, like he's been doing a really good job, but to lose six workers to a ling run by. It's just one of those things that's going to sting a little bit right in a game where you can't necessarily afford to take all that much damage. You, uh, you find yourself taking a whole bunch of damage. 
You know, it's just kind of, you know, the one time it feels like he gets off to a better start, Rogue already seemingly has, uh, has got some kind of answers for it. That's got to be a bit demoralizing as, um, as Keen, unless he can pull it together still. There is a Spire on the way up, and there was only the one BC made before going into double four production, so... Yeah, maybe if, we, if Corruptors come out right now, then we are going to see Rogue in a similar position to what Ragnarok was in, making Corruptors against a, a Battlecruiser army that doesn't exist, and he is going to make Corruptors, and that feels like a lot of overkill. You know, if you're playing against a bio Terran who just plays one BC typically, you wouldn't make uh, Corruptors then, right? Because it's just not worth it. So, this is where you got Corruptors on the way out, and now Keen shows up with double Thor and Hellbats. Let's see how this will go. A couple transfusions keeping those Roaches alive very nicely to begin with. I'm going to want to evacuate this first door backwards, make sure it stays around as long as possible. It should have been dropped back into the fight, though, and it took a little while to do that. And that may be one of the issues, as now Corruptors can at least be used to chase down these Medivacs. And that can be one positive from those Corruptors. Looks like they will not quite get the kill on this first Medivac that's boosting away. Yeah, but definitely uh, something to look at is the BC. Gonna try and be part of the defense. The Eroge is gonna split. They're gonna try and fight in. Tanks just sieged. Is this a little bit overkill? Are we pushing too heavily here as Rogue too soon? Pure Eroge is gonna get rid of the other siege tank. Corrupt has got rid of the Medivacs. And now this first Thor on the left-hand side is gonna die because it can't be saved by anything. One Thor in the natural at least is being repaired or was repaired. As the SCVs will save this orbital as well as it flies out of range. So the Corruptors can't stay cause spraying it forever. And now a lot of SCVs are going down, and how swiftly this game just fell apart for Keen. As it felt like things were going alright for him, and next thing you know, Rogue's on top of your base, and you just have no units or anything. And SCVs could probably die on the third base as well, and actually Rogue realizes that may be the better choice. Rogue wins 3-1 to one over Keen. The dominant performance from Rogue, all said and done. Gee, jeez.